What are thoughts, exactly? It is said that you have up to 60,000 thoughts on any given day. Most of them are habitual, and a few people reflect and consider whether their thinking is actually serving them. Even fewer people ever reflect upon what consciousness actually is, and how their thinking might influence their lives and circumstances. Under the current, rather mechanistic, modern paradigm, human thoughts and consciousness are viewed as little more than neuronal action potentials, firing automatically in the central nervous system. And yet the sages of many ancient Eastern spiritual traditions viewed thoughts very differently, as a form of energy that could influence not only our own lives, but the world around us. While most mainstream scientists would probably dismiss such an idea offhand, is it really so preposterous to think that thoughts and emotions might be forms of invisible energy, much like magnetism or radio waves? Imagine you were to travel 500 years back in time, bringing a modern iPhone with you. As you meet and interact with the people of feudal Europe, you show them the iPhone and try your best to explain to them that this little metallic device in your time has the power to send out invisible energy signals to nearby cellular towers and thus enable you to communicate with any person anywhere else in the world so long as they had a similar device, a receiver. You tell them that you could beam information to any other part of the world at the speed of light and this could take the form of a voice call, a text message, a picture, or even a high-res video recording. In the world of medieval Europe, where the only way to transmit information across distances was to use messengers on horseback, everything you told them would seem beyond preposterous. The people of that time could not begin to fathom the technology inside the iPhone, let alone believe any of your claims about its capabilities. These people would probably claim that you were speaking of magic and heresy and would possibly go on to attack you. To many people in the modern world, the law of attraction seems like magic, an idea that's just too out there to be true. And yet, hundreds of years ago, radio waves, Wi-Fi signals, and cell phone signals would also have been considered a form of magic simply because they lived in a time period that lacked the technology to detect, measure, and interpret these invisible forms of energy. It is not surprising then that these concepts also deeply fascinated none other than the great Nikola Tesla, who once stated that, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. There has been much speculation regarding exactly what he was referring to, with many scientists dismissing the quote altogether. Though Tesla was undoubtedly one of the most intelligent men who ever lived, whose inventions formed the foundation of our modern technological world, he also had a reputation for being somewhat weird, and was known to prefer befriending pigeons over people, and some of his unrealized inventions were somewhat outlandish to say the least, but also ridiculously awesome. And so it was easy for many of his peers to dismiss the quote as just a quirky offhand statement that lacked a more profound meaning. However, there are also many who believe that this great genius was referring to areas that modern science has yet to dare venture into, areas such as the nature of thought, human emotions, and even consciousness and the very human spirit itself. This is reinforced by the fact that Tesla had a strong friendship with Swami Vivekananda, a world famous Hindu monk, and that Tesla also spent much of his time studying Hinduism and the Vedic scriptures. Of course, it is rare to find serious scientists willing to devote study to such matters, as academic circles would undoubtedly frown upon it and even consider such work to be laughable. However, though mainstream science has not delved into this area, it has become a subject of increasing interest in popular culture, and there seems to be a steady rise in the spiritual awareness of people throughout the entire world. In fact, I've met many people fascinated by these universal spiritual concepts along my world travels from various cultures, including Croatia, Austria, Ukraine, Serbia, Portugal, and Greece, just to name a few, in addition to my home country of the United States, of course. In particular, the concept of the law of attraction has become immensely popular following the release of films and books like The Secret, and this has only grown with the countless celebrities attributing their successes to the law of attraction, and also a number of prominent YouTubers discussing the idea in exhaustive detail. In short summary, the law of attraction is the idea that thoughts are a form of energy emitted into the world, and thus influence the world and attract things back to you that resonate and harmonize with those thoughts. This is also known by many as manifestation. And thus, positive and healthy thinking patterns over the course of time 
are thought to attract more positive things and circumstances into your life. I mean, once you start researching this concept, it is quite shocking how many highly successful and prominent individuals in our society have touted the benefits of positive thinking and visualization. I, I truly believe that thoughts are the greatest vehicle to change power and success in the world. Everything begins with thoughts. I mean, the chairs that we're sitting in, the room that we're in, all started because somebody thought it. So I thought up the color purple for myself. I know this is gonna sound strange to you. I read the book. I, pa I got so many copies of that book. I passed the book around to everybody I knew. If I was on the bus, I'd pass it out to people. And when I heard that there was gonna be a movie, I started, I started talking it up for myself. I didn't know Quincy Jones or Steven Spielberg or how on earth I would get in this movie. I'd never acted in my life, but I, I felt it so intensely that I had to be a part of that movie. I just, I, I really do believe I created it for myself. I wanted it more than anything in the world and would have done anything to do it. In my home, like many other homes in Ireland, the real stress and the real fights come from the mortgage, come from this stress of home. My mother and father are still young. Now they, now they have their feet up, they can relax, they can... They are in a new place, so it's good. That's, that's something I always dreamed of. I always, I always visualise what giving would feel like. Giving to people who have given to me, what that would feel like. I always dreamed of just showing up one day and be like, here. And that would always give me like good feelings. Did you have faith maybe back then that your time would come and that you would be able to explode onto the scene as you had? If I didn't, it wouldn't have happened. So I had to believe in it, I had to feel it, I had to have faith in it for it to happen. So you're damn right I did. So my first rule is find your vision and follow it. You see, I think it's the most important thing that we have a very clear vision of where we go. A goal, where, where do we go? Because you can have the best ship in the world. You can have the best cruise liner, but if the captain does not know where to go, that ship will drift around the world and out there at sea and will never end up anywhere. And this is exactly the way it is in real life. If you don't have a goal, if you don't have a vision, you just drift around. Do you, all, do you all read about this or hear this? That you used to go up on Mulholland Drive and park yeah, every night. and visualize seeing yourself as... Yeah, I would visualize... Uh, yeah, I would this visualize, is when you were broke and poor. You know, right, having mm -hmm. directors interested in me and people that I respected uh, um, saying, you know, I like your work or mm -hmm. whatever that is. And, and uh, I would visualize things coming to me that I w wanted or whatever. This and, was in uh, like 1987, 85? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and didn't I you... had nothing at that time, so it was like, it, but it just made me feel better. It made me, at that time, all it really was for me was kind of making me feel better. I would drive home and think, well, I do have these things. And they're out there. I just don't have a hold of them yet, but they're out there. So didn't you write yourself a check? I heard yeah. that you did. Is that true? I wrote myself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered, and I gave myself uh, five years, or three years maybe, and uh, and uh, I dated it Thanksgiving 1995, and I put it in my wallet and I kept it there and it deteriorated and deteriorated and stuff and uh, and uh, but then just before Thanksgiving 1995 I found out that I was going to make 10 million dollars on I think it was Dumb and Dumber maybe Dumb and Dumber yeah yeah so you visualize yourself like. Yeah, yeah. Visualization works if you work hard. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's that the thing. You, you can't hard. just visualize yeah. and then, you know, go eat a sandwich. <laughs> My all-time favorite filmmaker since childhood is the brilliant writer-director James Cameron. And though he certainly does not have a reputation for being touchy-feely in any way, he had this to say about the power of imagination. Imagination is a force that can actually manifest a reality. I said, we're going to dive to the wreck, we're going to film it for real, we'll be using it in the opening of the film, it'll be really important, it'll be a great marketing hook, and I talked them into funding an expedition. <laughs> Sounds crazy, but this goes back to that theme about, you know, your imagination creating a reality, because it actually created a reality where six months later I found myself in a Russian submersible 
two and a half miles down in the North Atlantic, looking at the real Titanic through, through a viewport. Not a movie, not HD, for real. You have to imagine it first, and then you have to draw it, and then you have to walk it. The thing that is exciting about filmmaking is, the, is to think back to the moment in time right before you had the idea. And think about that at the moment that you're st sitting or standing on the set, and there are thousands of people around, and they've built this huge set, and there are all these actors, and there's all this energy and all this focus and realize that it's all in the service of, of something that was made up out of whole cloth. You know, I mean, that's fun. I mean, that, that's what an architect must feel like when they drive down the street and they look up and see a building that they designed. It's something that you imagined made tangible. And while I agree that science should always approach new topics with a degree of healthy skepticism and systematic rigor, I believe that it is extremely close-minded to deem the law of attraction a topic unworthy of scientific study and closer examination. Personally, over the years, I have gradually become a very strong believer in the Law of Attraction and many other spiritual principles. There are a number of reasons for this. First and foremost is personal experience, observing the patterns in my own life as well as the patterns that played out in the lives of my friends and acquaintances. Furthermore, I have a somewhat unique perspective because I worked in the medical field for many years. As an intern, resident, fellow, and later attending physician, I evaluated and treated many thousands of patients and I witnessed certain patterns play out time and again. My specialty is interventional pain medicine. And so for example, let's say you were to compare two patients with very similar demographic backgrounds and past medical histories, both suffering from the same condition, such as an acute lumbar radiculopathy, and only differed in terms of mindset. More often than not, the patient with the optimistic and healthy mindset would recover far faster. I saw this pattern play out time and again over the years. Of course, many would point out that patients with a healthier and more optimistic mindset are simply much more likely to engage in their physical therapy program and home exercises with greater dedication and consistency. But it's important to note that the relationship between positive thinking patterns and positive actions is actually a huge aspect of the law of attraction, though this is the obvious physical aspect of the law rather than the much more nebulous metaphysical aspect. Of course, over many years, Seeing this pattern play out so strongly, I couldn't help but get the sense that there was so much more to this than just the physical aspects. It got to the point where I could usually predict with very good accuracy which patients would recover quickly and easily, and those who would have a very difficult recovery course, even just during the initial consult. And of course, it isn't just my personal experiences and my experiences caring for my patients. In recent years, there have been several scientists I respect who have been intellectually courageous enough to author fascinating books on the law of attraction and also explore related spiritual principles that extend far beyond it. One is the geologist, Greg Braden, who has written several compelling books drawing profound connections between modern physics and ancient spiritual concepts. Others include the cell biologist, Dr. Bruce Lipton, who asserts that consciousness influences the body on a molecular level, especially in regard to epigenetics. In addition, there's also been the work of Dr. Robert Lanza, a medical doctor who asserts that life and consciousness are fundamental to the universe and goes as far as to propose that thoughts and consciousness create reality itself. Furthermore, even as our understanding of physics deepens, it seems to lend greater support for ideas like the law of attraction and a more spiritual view of the universe. When I was in high school, we were taught the Bohr model of the atom, which looked like a miniature solar system. And even this model, developed in 1913, showed that the atom was more than 99% empty space. The more modern model does not depict the electron as a solitary planet whirling around a sun, but a probability field of wave energy around the nucleus. And thus, it is now believed that an atom looks a lot more like a sphere of energy than a solar system. Furthermore, it has been discovered that protons and neutrons are actually made up of subatomic particles known as quarks, which are infinitesimally smaller than the nucleus itself. Thus, throughout the millennia of our current human civilization, most people have perceived the world around them to be very solid and tangible, though in actuality, from a quantum physics standpoint, everything around you is almost entirely empty space, and thus, everything you see in the world, in many ways, is just energy. It was Albert Einstein who famously asserted that energy and matter 
are different forms of the same thing, and the devastating power of a nuclear explosion is just the conversion of a uranium atom into raw energy. Thus, if everything you see in the world is just different forms of energy, including your own body, I don't find it much of a stretch to hypothesize that thoughts and emotions could also be forms of energy that science has not yet figured out how to directly observe and measure. I also don't think it's that much of a stretch to hypothesize that such an energy could exert influence on the world around us, the same way that the electromagnetic waves of sunlight warm your skin on a spring day. Lastly, I find it immensely fascinating how many great sages and religious figures throughout the world from various backgrounds have espoused concepts that directly evolved into what is now taught in modern self-improvement circles as the Law of Attraction. This includes the teachings of Jesus, Buddha, and the Hindu sages. In fact, it was the great Buddha himself who once stated that, all that we are is the result of what we have thought. These concepts have fascinated wise men and spiritual leaders for several thousand years, and so it is no surprise why it fascinates so many people today in our modern world especially now that ideas can be shared so easily via social media. Of course, all that being said, at this time, there is yet to be concrete evidence for the law of attraction. However, to be fair, there is also yet to be serious funding, incentive, or drive within the scientific community to study this topic in any meaningful depth. Thus, though I do have a tremendous interest in spirituality, the nature of reality, and I do have a strong belief in the law of attraction, I do have to admit that this is much more of a spiritual belief than it is a scientific one. My belief stems largely from my own intuition, my personal experiences, as well as my observations of the lives of countless others, including thousands of patients, as well as my study of the spiritual teachings of the greatest spiritual masters in history, including Jesus, Krishna, and Buddha. And furthermore, I am endlessly fascinated how these ancient spiritual teachings fit so well within the evolving framework of modern quantum physics. From a practical standpoint, what does the Law of Attraction mean for the everyday person? Well, if you don't like all the spiritual, mystical, and more abstract aspect of it, you can just disregard all of that, and even just from a common sense, logical standpoint, it just makes sense that developing a better mindset, attitude, and beliefs will inevitably lead to more positive behaviors over time, which inevitably will lead to more opportunities and a better life. Furthermore, just from a practical psychology standpoint, it is obvious that if you adopt a good attitude, more people around you will respond positively to you. In fact, it was Emerson who famously stated that, sow a thought and you reap an action. Sow an act and you reap a habit. Sow a habit and you reap a character. Sow a character and you reap a destiny. I love this quote because it is a very concise, practical and secular description that captures the essence of the law of attraction. And if you were a more spiritual, intuitive person, the metaphysical aspect simply adds another huge and fascinating layer that provides further motivation for optimizing your thoughts, mindset, and beliefs. Keep in mind that this doesn't mean you are not allowed to have negative thoughts. Bad things happen to everyone in life, and it is obviously healthy to properly mourn and to experience negative emotions during those times. An awareness and effective implementation of the law of attraction would simply mean to not dwell excessively or habitually upon negative thought patterns, to avoid catastrophizing, and also to learn how to reframe thoughts to become more empowering when it is reasonable to do so. Also, I believe that many popular spiritual teachers are teaching people to potentially misuse the law of attraction by emphasizing the manifestation of superficial, material things, which usually are just ego desires. For example, your ego may desperately want to manifest a Lamborghini, but your higher self and God probably don't care much about such things. On a higher, more transcendent level, I truly believe that God cares far more about your higher life purposes and the person you become than any material accomplishments. Thus, my personal belief is that it is very important to manifest along the divine plan and to co-create with God. Going back to the Lamborghini example, I believe that it would be far more beneficial for your long-term spiritual development to focus on manifesting an ethical, soul-aligned business around your passion and talents, one that would benefit others and make the world a better place, and also enable you to develop character traits such as courage and perseverance 
In such a scenario, the Lamborghini would likely eventually come into your life inadvertently while pursuing your soul's true mission. This approach would likely be much healthier and lead to much greater long-term joy than focusing on the Lambo itself. Furthermore, it is important to keep in mind that while I and many other proponents of the Law of Attraction believe that thoughts can influence reality, there are definite limits to this power, the same way that a small magnet could never lift a car. Now of course, along these lines, it is also important to keep in mind that because we have mastered technical knowledge of the universal force of magnetism, in great part due to the work of Tesla, humans now have the ability to engineer massive electromagnets, which do actually have the ability to lift an entire car. In the coming decades, if humans do dedicate the proper resources to study the powers of the mind and consciousness, it is not unreasonable to conjecture that one day we may be able to develop methods of amplifying such powers, and in the future, perhaps the mystical Jedi of Star Wars will no longer be confined to the realm of science fiction. Thus, I believe that Tesla was generations ahead of his time in his assertion that modern science should be unafraid of studying these very unconventional, metaphysical ideas. I really believe that once modern science begins to rigorously study the nature of thought and consciousness, it will make unimaginable discoveries that will lead to a quantum leap forward in human civilization. But anyway, coming back to Earth, from a much more practical standpoint, the Law of Attraction is actually very simple to start putting into practice in your everyday life. It simply means being mindful of your habitual thoughts and appreciating how powerful they are, and then adjusting them to serve you better. This means to reframe the setbacks and challenges of your life and view them from a more optimistic perspective, to cultivate gratitude for the good fortune in your life, to focus on the positive aspects of your life, to focus on the goals and outcomes you want in your future, and also to carefully assess your deep-seated beliefs and then adjust them as needed to empower you. Anyway, I hope you found this video to be a valuable, practical guide to the Law of Attraction. Please feel free to check out the catalog of videos on my channel and consider subscribing. I have a lot of content covering self-development, spirituality, wealth, and travel, and I put a lot of effort into ensuring that each video is well-crafted and very valuable and worth your time. Take care, everyone.